Okay, so we're on to our next step with our artwork. Um, this is the transfer from the um, enlargement onto the watercolor paper. So I've moved into my kitchen where I've got a window that looks outside that has some sun coming in, and I'm going to use that as what we call a light box. In the classroom, we have small light boxes that go on the tables that you can put your artwork on and a piece of paper on top of it and trace your artwork. And we have a big table that's like that for um, up to eight people to use. Well, we can't go to the classroom, but we can sure do it here in our own home with a window that gets light. Um, so it has to be done during the day, but it doesn't have to be bright sunny light like this. Any light coming through the window will help us to see through both pieces of paper to transfer the drawing from the lower paper onto the other paper. So I moved it into my uh, kitchen uh, where I had that. Um, you can do it in any window. I'm gonna show you an option. If you don't have an exterior window that you can use for this, I'll show you how to trace um, using a different process that's longer and more tedious and sometimes not as accurate, all right? So I moved in with these things. I've got my, my original sketch, my composition sketch on the sketchbook paper. I've got my enlargement onto the uh, drawing paper with the borders. Don't forget, uh, this has to be finished before you go on to that next step. So I've transferred over my drawing from this to that, and I, I changed things around a little bit as we talked about in class. Um, if you didn't come to class for that day, then uh, look at some of the examples that I've got of mine on the assignment page. Um, so I'm going to attach this to the window. Notice I've got a couple pieces of tape. I've got a piece of tape at the top and a piece of tape at the bottom. I don't want to put it on every, every side because it makes it harder to take it off. And I'm going to put it directly onto the, the, uh, the window. Um, so I'm going to turn my, my camera so you can see what I'm doing too, hopefully. There we go. I think that works. All right. So you're going to attach it to the window, a couple pieces of tape. All right, so you can see through it. It's still the same way I drew it. It's, it's facing me the same way I drew it when I traced it out. Um, now I'm going to take my watercolor paper. Your watercolor paper has two sides to it. One side is smooth, the other side is rougher. You can usually feel it or you can see it. Um, I, can, I can feel and see that this is the smoother side, so I'm gonna have the smoother side facing me. You want the smoother side because with our oil pastels, if you do the rougher side, you might become frustrated in the texture, the way it, it goes down. Um, so that's a consideration for you too. I'm using mass, um, actually painter's uh, artist tape to tape things down, but you could use painter's tape like you would put on the walls and around windows when you're painting the walls, um, blue painter's tape or, or the, um, uh, there are a couple different brand names, uh, frog tape, that sort of thing. Or you could use masking tape and yeah, last resort, scotch tape. You want to be careful not to damage your artwork. The, the enlargement gets points. This one gets points. You can't just do one or the other. You have to transfer it from the drawing paper onto this paper because they get separate points, right? And um, because we're transferring it onto this paper because this paper doesn't take oil pastels very well. This paper does. We're using watercolor paper because you might find yourself doing a little bit of watercolor application to it too. Both of these pieces of paper are the same size. Line them up at the outer edges. And I'm going to take these sides down instead of top to bottom so that I can remove them more easily. If I put the tape in the same place, it becomes more difficult to remove it. So now you should be able to see through my paper like I can the d design that's there. So uh, over here too, you need um, other things that you've been using. Whoops that you've been using up to this point, your ruler to draw straight lines, you're gonna redraw your borders, you need your HB pencil, don't bring your eraser, you do not want to erase this paper, okay? The watercolor paper should never get, er get erased. Um, and then, like I said, I brought my original uh, sketch along too, just in case there are things that I can't quite see uh, through my paper, I can get a better idea of them by having that sketch alongside it. So the process is, is um, just re, redrawing everything, tracing them onto the new paper that's on top. I'm going to draw the borders first, and I'm going to put a mark where the top and bottom of the border is, because when I move my ruler next to that border, it's hard to see where the line starts and stops. So I'm going to put my marks, and then I'm going to line my ruler up with the marks, and then I'm going to draw from mark to mark. 
I'm just tracing right on top of the lines that are already there. Okay, so I'm going to do the borders first, and then I'm going to fill in all my shapes with the borders. Um, some of my shapes inside of my borders, I need my ruler to draw, just like I did when I drew them the first time, because they were straight edges. Um, so I'm going to use my ruler to draw them too. And um, when I don't have straight edges, I'm just going to freehand draw. Now my, my area is a little bit tight here because I have a window sill right here where the upper window meets the lower window and slides up and down. If you've got something like that, it might be a little harder for you to get to too. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue with my ruler since I've already got it in my hands and I'm going to start drawing the objects in my picture onto the paper. And um, it helps, like I said, if I put a little mark on my paper where the lines start and stop so that I get them in the correct place because my ruler kind of hides that line when I move it up next to it. Right? So you can do them in advance, like I can do these before I get to them, and then I don't have to keep moving my ruler back and forth when I'm ready to do them. By the way, I, I want to remind you, you want to use your HB pencil to do this. Don't press hard. Hold your ruler nice and tight in place if you're using a ruler to trace any lines. I'm going to, uh, once I've got these lines drawn, I'm going to move into the, uh, the edges that don't have a ruler. So I'm going to continue on and, and finish up all my straight lines. I've got some in the table, some in the window, some in my calendar, some in my chair. Once I've got them done or trading out, I'm going to then do my lines that aren't done with, with those. And I'm going to very carefully draw long, continuous lines as much as I can. And don't draw hard. Don't press hard so that if you make a mistake, it's easier to disguise it with the oil pastels. No erasing, so take your time to really pay attention to what your, your original lines do so that you can redraw them as accurately as possible. And if it's a little bit off, it's not a big deal. Um, just remember, um, this is not supposed to be a realistic drawing anyway. It's more expressive. And every once in a while, you might need to go, okay, what, what's happening right in there? Oh, yeah, that's a long line that doesn't connect. And then these lines all do connect, right? So use your, your original composition sketch if you have any questions about that. So you're not constantly removing the paper to see what's underneath the paper, all right? So that's the process. You're going to redraw all the lines. We're going um, in classes on Wednesday and Thursday. We did about half of the artwork. So in, uh, on Friday, I'm sorry, on Tuesday and Wednesday we did that. On Wednesday, on Thursday and Friday, we're going to finish the other half, okay? So in class we'll spend about another half hour, 20 minutes probably, just finishing it up. And then we're going to practice with the oil pastels. We've got some pre-work to do for that before we apply the pastels to the uh, final paper. Um, now, if you don't have a window, here's the other option. On the on the um, back of the original, you can do this. You can turn it upside down on your tabletop. You should be able to see through your paper. If not, draw your lines a little thicker and darker on the front side. Turn it upside down. And then put some white paper or put it on a white tabletop so you can see through it. And then um, you, you should be able to see all those lines. And with a soft pencil, a 5B or 6B or maybe even a 3B, Go over all of your lines on the back side, and then turn it over, including the borders. Then turn it over so that it's facing the same way as it was the first time. I'll show you what it looks like. And you just go back over your lines again. It might be difficult for you to see those lines through your paper uh, when you're uh, not on a window, right? So um, it might be more difficult to see it, which might take you longer to do it. Um, but it, it'll transfer the lines over to your uh, over to your new paper by pressing the lines that you put on the back with soft graphite onto the, the paper. Now I didn't do a line that I actually had applied to the back, so I'll just show you here. There we go. So now I've got a line that represents one of the lines that I have here. All right, so that's the process. I know it's a little bit 
awkward with the light there. So you're going to be transferring your drawing over like this onto the new paper, right? It's a trace, all a straightforward trace. Um, it, it's faster and easier and more correct if you use the light coming from a window to do the tracing method. All right, that's it. Um, be ready to continue on with the project on our next class so that you can get this work done. Bye.